The motto and Kawaki, how are they connected, and why do they need each other? Just how strong is Kawaki, and why is he a puppet for the scientist? Enjoy watching. There's a lot you can find about Amato online, from him being Kawaki from the past to the fact that he is actually Shibai. Unfortunately, I'm also to blame for this misinformation due to my animations. But let's talk about what we know about the character from the manga and anime. We don't know much about Amato's past, but we do know one thing. About 15 to 16 years ago, accounting for the time skip, the scientist lost his daughter, Akiba. She fell ill with an unknown disease, and no one in the world knew how to cure her. Since Amato was a very skilled scientist, he began studying cloning. Thanks to his knowledge, he was able to create a perfect clone of his daughter. At this point, you know this character is Delta. However, the scientist didn't know one thing. Even if you scan the brain and transplant all memories to the clone, the personality will differ because one crucial ingredient is missing, the soul. At that moment, Amato finally realized that his daughter had died. The clone he created had only the appearance and memories of his daughter, but was not her. However, at that moment, Jigen entered his life, the vessel of Ishiki Otsutsuki, who had been sitting in the boy's brain for at least a thousand years. After the battle with Kaguya, Ishiki was nearly dead, so to survive, he shrank and entered a monk's ear, attaching himself to the brain like a parasite. After many centuries, he reached out to Amato, inviting him to his organization as a scientist who would be able to transplant Otsutsuki's cells into another body, as Ishiki needed to strengthen his karma with Shibai Otsutsuki's genes. In return, if the scientist agreed, Ishiki would bring Akiba, Amato's daughter, back to life. At that moment, the man didn't specify how he would do it, but understand he was facing a deity, Amato agreed. Over the years working in Jigen's organization, the scientist created clones of powerful shinobis. It wasn't specified which ones exactly, but it was said that the recreated clones of Amato from cells of various shinobi, with Shibai's cells embedded, were stronger than Jigen himself. Because of this, they were sent out for destruction. However, Amato managed to keep one, as according to Otsutsuki, he posed no threat. This was Kashin Koji, a clone of the legendary Jiraiya. Amato created him specifically for his own plans. Since he didn't trust the organization's leader, he started studying karma, the technique that allowed Otsutsuki to be reborn. During this time, several cyborgs were also created, Code, Ida, and Demon. Amato's daughter, Delta, who lacked a soul and was also a cyborg, also joined the organization. But Shibai's genes were only implanted in those who could handle them. The brother and sister, who became very powerful, inherited the abilities of the strongest Otsutsuki shown to us. Let's touch on Shibai a bit. He's a representative of Kaguya's clan who consumed so many divine fruits roots that he evolved into a divine form. Because of his immense power, his soul no longer needed a body. He went to another dimension. His flesh went to Jigen. How exactly, we don't know. Subsequently, it was dismantled and his cells implanted into various cyborgs, where his body is currently, and what it looks like, we don't know. While Amato was creating clones, he was also preparing his own plan and future puppet in the form of Kawaki. The scientist realized that Jigen would use karma to resurrect his daughter. However, there were no guarantees, as the organization's original plan was to create a divine tree. But thanks to the information Amato received, he understood that this would mean the end of the world. And if that happened, Otsutsuki certainly wouldn't return Akiba. But Kawaki's karma started unraveling faster and faster. And the scientist couldn't create artificial karma for his daughter in time. So he orchestrated everything for Kawaki to escape. And Kashin Koji, who was a spy for the scientist, arranged for Amato to end up in Konoha, essentially, under Naruto Uzumaki's protection. This was also Amato's plan. He realized that only legendary shinobi, who had already fought such an enemy, could defeat Jigen. Additionally, the scientist understood Kawaki's shattered psyche perfectly, and knew he could easily manipulate him. But things turned out even better because Kawaki eventually became attached to the seventh Hakagi and his family. Delta, sent supposedly to observe everything in the Leaf Village, intervened in events in Konoha and severely wounded Kawaki. This allowed the scientist to prepare for the next step. The motto created a new arm using Kawaki's cells, and infused it with his daughter's unpacked karma. Additionally, he added something else there, but we'll talk about that later. Then, the scientist went to Konoha thanks to Kashin Koji, who transported him there. Amato began manipulating the seventh to become a leaf citizen and continue his scientific pursuits. By this time, Kashin Koji was fully halting Jigen. The scientist needed Kawaki to lose his karma and Otsutsuki's power, which would allow him to achieve two things. Get rid of Ishiki and independently restore Kawaki's karma, but upgraded. While negotiations were ongoing between the seventh and the scientist, Kashin Koji completed his 
mission and destroy Jigen's body, triggering Ishiki's rebirth, forcing him to be reborn in a monk's vessel. However, it was a terrible vessel that couldn't contain all of Otsutsuki's power. But after his rebirth, Kawaki's body lost his karma. Now, only the second part of the plan remained, returning Kawaki's upgraded karma. But to do that, Ishiki had to be detained until his vessel couldn't contain his true power anymore. Because he had to be reborn in Jigen, Ishiki couldn't use most of his abilities. The more chakra he used, the less time he had. So Amato turned to Naruto and Sasuke because they could hold him off long enough. Eventually, they sent the scientist and Kawaki to a safe place where he noticed that the boy cared deeply for the seventh. Fortunately, it all worked out, although not without losses. Naruto lost his Kurama and Sasuke lost his Rinnegan. This was a plus for the scientist as it gave him a new leverage. Kawaki's fear of losing the seventh because he had become much weaker. Along with this, Code appeared, seeking revenge for his beloved Lord Otsutsuki. The motto suggested Kawaki take back his karma because with that power he could protect the seventh as Naruto couldn't defeat Code now and would likely perish at his hands. However, Kawaki hated that seal and Otsutsuki hated it too. Although the scientist claimed Kawaki already had karma, all the Otsutsuki's power he had remained, it was just inaccessible. But this access could be restored without the fear of Ishiki's rebirth and Kawaki's body since his soul had gone to the afterlife. However, Kawaki still didn't want to do it because he despised that power. But sadly, he was too foolish and thought that to protect the seventh, it would be easier to surrender to Code, letting him finish him off so his beloved Hakagi wouldn't be harmed. But the only remaining follower of Jigen had his own plans. Unfortunately, Naruto appeared on the battlefield and from Boruto's karma emerged Mama Shiki, who took control of the younger Uzumaki. Due to Code's threats, Naruto couldn't move because if he did, Shikamaru's life would end. Mama Shiki decided to take advantage of this and destroy the seventh. At that moment, Kawaki realized he needed karma's power and thanks to that, it manifested. Because in the arm that Amato returned to him, not only was Akiba's karma placed but also a way to restore Ishiki's power. The scientist didn't give Kawaki a choice, he just presented him with the fact. It was an illusion of choice because he knew the foolish boy would desire that power again and awaken it. And Amato prepared the door for him to do so. Then, Code escaped and Kawaki took the life of his brother. But thanks to karma, he returned. However, the nagging idea of protecting the seventh only began to grow after Kawaki nearly lost the only person who accepted him and gave him a family. The poor boy's mind clouded and he decided to do whatever it takes to save the Hakagi. But, unfortunately, Amato's plan was just starting to unfold because restoring karma wasn't enough. Kawaki had to willingly transfer Akiba's karma from his body to a clone of Delta, which the scientist had prepared in Konoha. And once Kawaki does this, his daughter will be reborn. But Code decided to reclaim his own power, and we learn that Amato placed a limit on Code, preventing him from using his full power. Therefore, the scientist was kidnapped. But this was also Amato's plan as he wasn't threatened by anything. However, he pretended to be in danger to gain Shikamaru's trust, and he had to return Code's power. But during this time, he persuaded Ida to betray the organization and go to Konoha with him, where she could be with Kawaki, whom she loved. In the end, the girl agreed, and the scientist not only returned to Konoha, but also brought two strong allies. This not only showed Shikamaru that the scientist was good, but also surrounded himself with his own cyborgs, over which he had a great influence. However, we'll learn more about this later. At the moment when Kawaki went berserk and sealed Naruto in another dimension to protect him, Amato had to admit that despite Ishiki's karma in the boy's body, he could disable it because he had previously implanted a disable command into him, which he had used on his daughter's clone. And at this moment, we get a big hint that all the cyber created by Amato, received various commands from him that could either unleash their power or simply disable them. And now, considering all this, we understand that when Code started to abduct him, Amato could have just disabled him, but chose to act like a victim. But there was also Ida. Along with her brother, she also has a disable function. This is confirmed when we learn that they were both directed towards utilization, meaning complete destruction. Do you really think they would agree to be destroyed? Each of Amato's created cyborgs had a disable command in case of unforeseen circumstances. That's how those, stronger than Jigen, were sent for utilization, as no one would agree to destruction. This means that the disable command exists for all of them. However, Amato pretends that Code is dangerous, Ida is dangerous, Demon is dangerous, and portrays himself as an innocent victim. But when Kawaki faces death, he reveals his trump card and says he can disable him. The main thing is not to harm the guy. However, can such immense power as Ishiki's be simply disabled? I think not. But we'll talk about that a little later. Amato's plan was interrupted when Kawaki used Ida his power, which she received from Shibai, the omnipotence, and rewrote the memories of everyone in this world. And now, everyone thinks that Kawaki is Naruto's son, and Boruto is a traitor who killed the Hakagi. Even the scientist's consciousness was rewritten in a way that he started perceiving Boruto as Kawaki. He thought
thought that Boruto had Akiba's karma and left the village. After that, a time skip began. All this time, Amato was observing Kawaki because he couldn't understand why he had Ashiki's karma, but he's considered Naruto's son, who should have Mamashiki's karma. And now, in the new manga, two blue vortex, three years have passed, and Kawaki, embodying Ashiki Otsutsuki, who with his incomplete power defeated Naruto and Sasuke, is incredibly weak. And many wonder why even Amato is puzzled by this and doesn't understand why he's weak. But he started to suspect that memories have been rewritten. And the one with his daughter's karma is actually Kawaki, who has been in the village all this time. We don't know Amato's true plan, we only know its first part, namely, to resurrect his daughter using karma, which Otsutsuki, that is Kawaki, will transfer to Delta's clone who is now in Kanoha. There is much we don't know about why he's bringing back his daughter, why he brought Ida and Demon to the village, what he wanted to do with Shibai's body, and where it is. However, to revive his daughter, he needs Kawaki, and he needs to be manipulated somehow. Therefore, Amato most likely didn't return all of Ishiki's power to Kawaki. So, he still doesn't have access to some of the genes. This means there's a way to manipulate the naive boy who wants power out of thin air. And thanks to karma, he will succeed. So, there are two possible reasons why Kawaki is weak. First, Amato hasn't given him access to his full power to manipulate him and offer him full power. Only after he returns Akiba to him, meaning after he transfers karma to Delta. And the second option is that Kawaki has an Otsutsuki's power blocker that allows Amato to give him voice commands and even disable him when necessary, because I don't think Ishiki's true power can just be taken and disabled using technology. Based on this, Kawaki will regain his full power when he returns the scientist's daughter, and we will see the events in the first episode. At the moment, Kawaki is not using all of Otsutsuki's power, only a small part of it. Therefore, Boruto can easily handle him even without using karma, since Kawaki is not a shinobi, but Boruto is. Kawaki won't reign ninjutsu since he has shinjutsu. He is the opposite of his half-brother, Kawaki Otsutsuki, who wants to destroy representatives of this clan, and he considers all shinobi weaklings. Boruto, on the other hand, is a shinobi who wants to prove that their era will never end, and their power can even surpass the Otsutsuki themselves. Based on this, it's clear how Kawaki will become stronger. As for Amato, he's the dark horse who could become the true villain of the entire Boruto anime in the future, because he manipulates everyone skillfully, and perhaps even us, the viewers, and all his words could be lies. I'll be waiting for you in the comments. Good luck to everyone.